So I will I will start with putting the supply supply locations here. CRL. If you already have made such a structure, you don't have to. Okay. And then we have our demand locations, which are northwest. So these are my supply supply locations and these are my demand locations right so i'm just giving them some colors now we already see a cost structure here right so maybe one idea could be that we just put the cost here uh, so here what we see is that so first one is how much it costs to deliver four units from Seattle to Northeast, which was about 2.2, .2, yeah, $2 only, okay? So remember that the cost are for four units, okay? So we have the cost and again, remember that they are par, par every four units, okay? I'm going to save it somewhere. So now, if I want to have this cost per unit instead of four unit, what will I do? I will just divide all the cost by four, four right? So let's do this. Let's just copy it below. Okay, just to get par unit cost. So this is up to you how you want to design it, but uh, this is how I am deciding to do it. So I'm calling it par unit cost. And what I will do is I will go and start a function here equal to then I select the top one divided by four okay so I get the power unit cost and then I just drag it we just drag it to the left no to the right so all of them are divided by four and then drag the whole thing down so all of them are divided by four just to double check if I double click here I see that this one is divided by four so all of them are divided by four if you, if you look if you look on table 5.16 on the same page on page 152 we have information about a small warehouse or large warehouse the fixed cost for a large small warehouse and variable cost for a uh, small warehouse again uh, yeah similarly fixed cost for a large warehouse variable cost for a large warehouse so let's say we incorporate this information here we start in this line okay so here, let's say I include a small warehouse, S-M-A-L-L. Let's say I just use W to represent warehouse, okay? I will use a different color here so that I can differentiate. So the next four columns will be about uh, warehouse, so they are in green color, okay? So first, let's say I put the information about fixed cost. So for Seattle, we have 300,000. If Seattle warehouse is open, we have 300,000 cost. Okay, is it correct? Yes. If Denver is open, then we have 250,000. And let's say we will mention here a small warehouse capacity. Okay, small warehouse, we say cap to represent capacity. Okay. So because each warehouse, we have to take into consideration the capacity of the warehouse. And then again, we write large, large warehouse. This is fixed cost. And then we write large warehouse cap, cap. okay? So we see that the variable costs are fixed at actu actually 0 0.20. Otherwise, maybe we would have created another column for that. But as we see the variable costs are fixed for any kind of situation to 0 0.20, uh, there is for now no need to create another column for that, okay? But let's now start to fill up with the large warehouse fixed cost in this row here, okay? So here we have uh, 500,000. So these are our fixed costs. Okay, great. Do we know the capacity? what is the capacity for a smaller warehouse yeah i think a small warehouse can handle up to 2 million and large warehouse can handle up to 4 million 
So to indicate two million. Does that say in the text? In the text, yeah. On yeah. page one hundred and fifty one, on the first paragraph. Yeah. yeah. So we give two million one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we drag it because it is same. All the small warehouse will have a capacity of two million. And all the large warehouse will have a capacity of four million. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we drag it. One more thing is we have to create our decision variables, right? Here, for better visibility, uh, I am thinking of hiding this part because we have already used them here, right? So I'm thinking of hiding the first part because we will not need them for now. Okay. So I'm just selecting them and then click and then right click and then hide now what i will do is actually i will copy this part again i'll copy this part i will select this i'll copy it and i'll click here and i will paste it okay now i'm calling this decision variables okay because we will need the same structure more or less I have just copied it okay and now I'm removing all this data because we don't we we will we will decide on this data so we don't need them so I'm removing all of them here I will also remove the last one uh, and here I will say I will I will like I will give a different name I will say open open a small warehouse O P E N open a small warehouse okay then maybe I will say the same thing here I will copy it and paste it here so you can give any name I'm just saying okay when it, what happened I'm just saying that it will give me the binary variables zero or one when I have the small warehouse open and when I have the large warehouse open and this will be my total warehouse okay. and I will also remove all this information here I normally like to have some colors let's say for decision variables I use this color and for opening warehouse I will be using let's say this light green color so these ones we will be defined we will get it from the optimization right but what will be the value for total warehouse it will be the, this, this. Plus. total will be this Times. plus this okay. right so it's just adding these two up okay if both of them are open then we will have two okay and if only one of them are open we will have one if none of them are open we will have zero okay so I have just added just these two added here so that's that's a little bit more of setup maybe let's put zero in all of them it's uh, yeah, I like to put zero it looks it makes life easier no not the last one not the last one but rest of it so now now we have to think about our constraints normally in my mind what comes first is the capacity constraint okay so let's say I write it capacity constraint yeah I will give it a different color and different name a uh, different yeah look let's say I use this one again here and make it bigger so where do we have our capacity constraint in our Warehouse. warehouses they are located in these five places right so I'll just copy it and I will put it here okay and to define capacity constraint one of the easiest idea is to define excess capacity so if we define our excess capacity here we can just say that our excess capacity should be zero or higher okay that would mean that we will not be out of capacity so to do that we have to give a function here for excess capacity how do we do that 
So to define excess capacity, we start a function, okay, and then I start with a bracket. So first I have to define what is my capacity in Seattle, right? So when, so I have to go, I have to come here, when my small wire is open, then my capacity is this one, okay? So that's my capacity when it is open. So I multiply both of them. You have to be careful here, you know? So sometimes I tend to multiply this with this, but no, this is the cost. This is the fixed cost for having the warehouse open. But we have to multiply with the capacity. So with this column, not this one, okay? So I close this and then I add plus. So we can have also the large warehouse open or close, right? So then I have to multiply this one with the large warehouse capacity here, okay? Again, you have to be careful, you select the capacity, not the cost, okay? So then I close it, so these are my capacity based on if it is open or close, and then I have to deduct how much I have served from there, right? So that's how I define my excess capacity. So how, can, how do I know what I have served? I will go for some command, okay? And then this is the demand that I will be serving from Seattle warehouse. So this will be my, this I have to deduct from my capacity. Okay, so then enter. And then I will, sim I will simply drag it up to the last one. So when I click the last one, just to double check, I see that the equation is in place. So this multiplied with this, plus this multiplied with this, minus the sum of all the demand that I have served from each of the supply locations, okay? So it looks fine. 